Just before we get on to the talk, I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, you can see the slides for this talk and uh, nearly all my other talks. If you go to the uh, this website, my website, bridgeclass.co.uk, click on handouts and here it's grouped into different sections. So here we're going to be talking about Jacoby to no Trump. So uh, you can look at the slides that uh, I'll be using uh, today. And let me shift to the presentation. And this is what uh, I'm going to be talking about, Jacoby to no Trump, which is a very popular convention that uses a to no Trump response to an opening bid of one of a major to show support for your partner's major and enough points per game, normally 13 or more points. So, uh, so Tuna Trump is an art, it becomes an artificial bid and it gives up on the natural meaning of Tuna Trump, which would typically show something like 10 to 12 points and a balanced hand without a fit for your partner's major. So it is these two bidding sequences here one heart to no trump or one spade to no trump. Um, do interrupt me if you have any questions as we go along, but I hope I'll answer all of them by the time I get to the end of the talk. So the to no trump bid is forcing and artificial and it should be alerted and I'll be talking about that as well. Uh, and the point of this convention is really to allow you to determine whether you have the values for a slam and to investigate a slam at a lower level, which is otherwise quite hard unless you play some kind of convention like this. It's very popular in um, systems like five card major systems like standard American, um, but it can also be used in ACOL and that's what the focus of this talk is gonna be today. Um, it's only in response to one of a major. So one club, two no trump or one diamond, two no trump remain natural and they show a balanced hand with uh, 10 to 12 points and no four card major. So those, Ernie, yes. Sorry, may I ask, um, uh, what about the unusual tuna trump? Where does that fit in? So that's a completely different convention. Yes, I know, yeah. but it's showing um, in my convention, one heart, it shows the two minors or it's Michael's. How, how do you differentiate between them? Okay, so this is when your partner opens one heart, you respond to no trump. The unusual to no trump is when the opponents open one of a suit and you jump to two no trump. Right, thank you. Yes. So, so, so thank it's you. completely yeah. different uh, to the unusual to no trump. Um, so, um, yeah, so after one of a major to no trump, um, there are actually five different responses you can make. And obviously the person who invented this convention, who was, I think, uh, Jacob, uh, Oswald Jacoby, rather, um, uh, thought of meanings for all possible bids. And the, these, are the, these are the five bids. If, if you bid a new suit, so one heart, two no trump, a new suit like three clubs or something that shows a singleton or void in that suit and that is alertable that's um for those of you familiar with splinter bids it's very much like that a splinter bid um the other uh, and it, the, you you bid the suit in which you have the singleton um otherwise if you bid a new suit at the four level that shows a good second suit now in most descriptions of this convention, they're written from the point of view of people playing five card majors. And there it normally says that the second suit should be a, a five card suit. However, if you're playing Akol, where your original suit could be a four card suit, I think a more reasonable um, interpretation is to say that it should be a, at least a good four card suit. But it should be a, a good suit if you jump in a new suit. So. That's um, th those are two bids you can make. The three level shows the shortage. The four level shows length and a, and a real good suit. Otherwise, the bid you make is used to show a hand to uh, describe the strength of your hand. 
So you've opened one heart, your partner bids to no Trump, you're, that's forcing to, to gain. Um, but now you have a chance to show the strength of your hand. If you can't do one of the first two things with a distributional hand, what you do is you bid to show your strength. And the, the, for the weakest hand you have with say 11, 13 points, you jump to game. So if you go one heart, they bid two in a trap, you would jump to four hearts. That's the weakest bid. The next bid up is three no trump. So again, it doesn't mean you want to play no trump. It's just showing um, that you've got a medium hand, about 14 to 15 points. That should be alertable. And then the strongest bid you can make is to bid the major at the three level. And that shows a maximum hand. And I find that actually using the losing trick count is quite a reliable way of uh, describing your hand, that the minimum hand will typically be seven losers. The medium hand would typically be six losers. And the strongest hand, normally about 16 to 19 points, would typically be five losers. And knowing that those, that's the number of losers you're you're showing can help your partner uh, decide whether you're in slam territory or not. We'll look at some examples of all of this in a moment. And as I say, the slides for this are on the website because it the, the the one disadvantage I suppose of this convention is it is quite a lot to remember. Um, but the the logic of this strength step response is really thinking. With a, with a weak hand, you just bid game. That shows less interest. And then the, the, the stronger your hand, the, the, um, the, the less you bid. So three no trump is um, the medium hand, and then three of a major is the strongest hand. We'll look at some examples of all of this, so hopefully it will make more sense to you. So here's a, one example where you open one spade. Your partner bids two no trump. You've agreed to play uh, Jacoby two no trump. And here, with a singleton heart, you should show that by bidding three hearts. That shows a singleton or void in heart. So it's very much like a splinter bid. And hopefully your partner can um, use the fact that you've got a singleton or void in hearts to assess how good a fit that is for their hand. Um, or another bid you can make if you've got a good second suit is to jump to the four level. That should be at least a good four card suit containing at least a couple of honors. And again, your partner may be able to see how all that fits in with their hand. Um, the other bids you can make then are all based on showing your overall strength. And this hand, for example, is a seven loser hand. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven losers. So it's a minimum hand. So you just show that by rebidding four hearts. That's the weakest uh, bid you can make there. Um, and then the next one up, this is an example of a hand with uh, six losers, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you show that by bidding three no trump. The losers I'm talking about, um, which I hope nearly all of you are familiar with, is all based on the losing trick count where you just look at your cards in the top, the top three cards in every suit. And you can see this is a six loser hand. And then the strongest bid you can make is to rebid the major at the three level. This is an example of a five loser hand. One, two, three, four, five losers there. Okay, so the, that's a thing that takes a little bit of remembering, but uh, hopefully you will uh, be able to remember those, um, those five possible responses. Tony, now, um, it's yeah. like a, just a very oh. quick question. On the three no Trump response, um, just looking at your slide then, it doesn't have to show any other stoppers, doesn't have to be completely balanced. No, it's not. It's it's the losing not. tricks. Yeah, it, it's just that it's uh, in between the other two and typically six losers. Thank you. Yeah. No, it, no it, it definitely doesn't say you've got a balanced hand. Although if you had a singleton, uh, you would prefer to to uh, to show that by um, 
by bidding the suit at the three level. So it does, uh, I suppose, show a hand uh, that probably doesn't have a singleton and probably doesn't have a strong second suit either. So yeah, the, these these hands are somewhat balanced, but not, I wouldn't say balanced exactly. Um, how does the auction go on? Well, let's um, look at the different um, responses by opener. Here's one where it went one spade, two no trump. Um, West has got, sorry, East has got enough for game here and a fit in spades. It shows at least four cards in your partner suit. Three hearts now is showing a singleton or void in hearts. And what East needs to do on this hand is look at how well that fits in with their holding in the heart suit. And this holding of A75 is the kind of ideal holding you want to have. So there's no wasted values in that suit. All your strength is in the other suits. And if your partner does bid three hearts, um, you may well then think about looking for a, a slam there. Um, if you bid four no trump, um, and here four no trump is Roman key card Blackwood, which is also something I recommend you play. Four no trump here says, how many key cards do you have? And five hearts says two. And here the two key cards that West has are the ace and king of spades. Um, so even though you're missing one key card, you're missing the ace of clubs, six spades is a pretty good bet here. OK, and when your partner shows those two key cards, you should probably just go to six uh, spades. OK, if I change the um, east hand around here, this second hand, I've just changed it slightly so that the clubs and the hearts are swapped around. Now, when your partner bids three hearts, that is a, a bad fit for your heart holding because that king jack is a sort of bit wasted uh, values. So if your partner shows a singleton heart there, singleton or void in hearts, maybe you would just settle for four spades here. And I hope you can see that even though you've got exactly the same number of points, um, four spades, you probably don't want to be in a slam here because... Uh, six spades would probably not do very well. You, you've got a heart to lose and probably at least one club to lose. So um, that's how you bid. It's very similar to how you bid in response to splinter bids, for those of you familiar with those. Um, how does it go on if your uh, opener shows a, a good second suit? So here, if it went one spade, two no trump, four clubs here is showing a real second suit with at least a couple of honors, then you should look at your holding in that suit. Here, the king of clubs probably fits in very well with your partner's uh, club suit. So you would be encouraged to go on. And if you bid four no trump here, asking for key cards, five hearts here is showing two key cards. And here in this case, it's the ace of clubs and the king of spades. So here, again, a slam is a pretty good bet here even though you're missing the ace of spades. Um, if your partner doesn't make any of those bids, but makes a bid that shows their um, strength, then you should look at how good your hand is. So here's a hand where you bid two no trump. The three no trump bid there, if you remember, that typically shows a six loser hand. And if you count the losers you've got, it's actually eight losers. Actually, your hand is, um, you know, quite right at the low end of um, uh, using Jacoby to no trump. Um, nonetheless, I, I do want to be in four spades here because um, I've got 12 points and a doubleton. But it's actually eight losers are caught using the losing trick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you count on your partners to have six losers, then you don't really want to be above four spades. So six and eight is 14. Take that away from uh, 80. Tony, yeah. Does that three no trumps not have anything to do with having a balanced hand? It's no, I, I, I think um, Maggie was asking a similar question um, earlier. And no, the three no trump is not saying I've got a balanced hand. It, it's, it's, it's a completely artificial meaning saying, uh, you know, that typically it's a six loser hand. OK, so don't don't whatever you do, um, you know, think of passing three no Trump. 
because you, you're headed for four spades. Um, just wanted to talk about our uh, alerting rules. Um, and artificial bids are meant to be alerted. And there are a number that come up in Jacoby to no Trump. If you're playing face to face or real bridge, you alert your partner's bid. Um, and on BBO, if you're playing uh, there, you should self alert. So what are the artificial bids that need to be alerted? Well, the Tuno Trump itself should be alerted. So if you're playing face to face, when your partner bids Tuno Trump, West on the real bridge, you just click on the alert um, flag. You don't give an, a description of the bid at that point. You just say alert. But if you are asked about it, you would then say that's Jacoby to no Trump, and it is a game forcing spade raise. In other words, it's um, and that that is if you're self alerting on BBO, you could you could say it's just Jacoby to no Trump, but perhaps a better description is actually to put in a complete description that it's Jacoby to no Trump and it's a game forcing spade raise. The um, if you're playing like in an EBU event. They, they've uh, the EBU said that you know when you're giving a description of a bid, it's not sufficient just to say give a name for it, and you're meant to give a, a full description. Now, obviously, there's a balance between you know giving a real detailed description of what a bid shows and 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 just giving a, a name. But um, obviously, most people will be familiar with what Jacoby Tuno Trump is. But if if that's not clear, then you should say it's it's a game forcing. Um, raise in support of spades. Um, if the auction continues with three hearts, as in this example here, that three hearts bid should be alerted um, because it's um, uh, an artificial bid. And if you're asked about what it, you should alert it. Um, and if uh, East is asked what it means, you should say it shows a singleton or void in hearts. Um, Can the singleton be an ace? <laughs> um, I wonder if anyone always could ask me that. Um, the um, there, there's the the idea of splintering with an ace. Um, some people uh, recommend that you don't splinter with an ace, and um, other people don't have that requirement. They they would splinter with an ace. I'm actually going to do a little talk about this at one at some point. Why I I think it's probably better not to splinter with an ace, um, but that's by no means a universal um, uh, approach. So um, it's up to you. I I'm I'm going to at some point do a little talk on whether you should splinter either in this case or with splinter bids with an ace and and talk about perhaps the advantages and, and disadvantages of it. But generally speaking, I think it's better if you don't. But We'll leave that for another topic. So you can do whichever you think you, you'd like to do uh, today. <laughs> um, so uh, the in the second example here, this three no Trump, which is an artificial bid again. Um, and again, you should alert it. And if you're asked about it, you should show say it shows a medium hand with about six losers. Just say about so it covers your bases. <laughs> so um, that's just roughly what it shows. Tony, uh, do you need to be that specific? Well, I think you should say a medium hand or something or, or a point range, if you like. But but I, I, I think you have to say something like that. What else would you think of saying, Steve? OK, Steve's not there anymore. Oh, but... I... Yeah. So I just took, I put mute back on. Yeah, I was just thinking I, I would have thought a, a point count would have been sufficient. Yeah, well, fine. I, th I think if you want to give a point count, that that's that's fine too. Um, but you, you should be prepared to give an explanation about, you know, what, what any of the bids are. I mean, arguably, um, even the bids that you make that are not artificial do have some special meaning. Um, and... I mean, there, there is a case you could be made that you should sort of alert all, all the bids that because they have some special meaning. But I think, strictly speaking, you don't have to alert bids unless they're um, artificial. Although, I, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert in, in alerting rules. Um, so uh, uh, 
but but these bits, the ones I've highlighted, are are artificial and ought to be alerted. Um, the the other bits, you know, like if if you rebid four hearts, for example, that uh, that's obviously a natural bid and doesn't need to be uh, alerted, I believe. Surely that also me uh, applies to whether you're showing a strong second suit. Because that's yes. natural. Yes, but that's natural. Yeah, that's right. So I think the natural bids um, are not artificial, and so though they don't need to be alerted. But the ones I've highlighted on this page are the ones that need to be uh, that are artificial and ought to be alerted. But yeah, but the showing a real second suit or rebidding your suit is uh, is natural is a a natural bid, not an artificial bid. Um. What else can I say? Um, in competition, if there's a suit overcall, Jacoby Tuno Trump is off. So here, if you open one spade and North has bid two diamonds, Tuno Trump now is no longer Jacoby. Tuno Trump reverts to its natural meaning of, say, 10 to 12 points. And here it should show uh, a stopper in the suit that's been overcalled in diamonds. So here, to no Trump is natural, uh, it's not Jacoby anymore. And uh, same applies if there's a, a double. Um, if it goes one spade double, then uh, you wouldn't bid to no Trump as Jacoby over the double. In fact, my recommended bid on this hand here with 11 points over the double uh, might be to redouble. That's uh, that typically shows a hand where you've got, say, at least nine points. You don't necessarily have a good fit for your partner, and you're, dub you're redoubling to show that partner we have the balance of the point. So, if they end up in some contract, we should either try to outbid them or double them if they uh, if if we think we can defeat it. So, on this hand, if you do redouble, um, that's not Jacoby. South might bid two hearts here. Um, and then if it comes back to you, maybe now you're going to, you don't really want to double two hearts. A double of two hearts, it would be saying we think we can defeat two hearts. I don't think he necessarily knows that and might instead be two no Trump. And maybe you'd end up in three no Trump on this one. So um, two no Trump, in fact, over an intervening double, I recommend that you use that as what's called Truscott two no Trump which is a slightly different bid. It, after an intervening double to no trump, if you play this convention, it's used to show a limit raise or better in your partner's major. So not quite as good as Jacoby to no trump, but showing at least 10 to 12 points. And use to no trump in this situation um, to uh, invite, uh, invite game, if you like, show fit in spades, but invite game. The logic of that is that if you had a hand with um, uh, 10 to 12 points, but without a fit, you would redouble. So two no Trump is, is used if you play this convention to, as um, a, a slightly different meaning. I don't really want to go into this one because it's sort of, there's already quite a lot to take on there, but uh, just to be aware that over interference, um, Jacoby to no Trump is off. And if you play Jacoby to no Trump, um, what you will find is that there are a lot more hands where you can look for a slam, where you will, uh, where other people may be stopping in in game, and you're able to investigate a slam. If you don't play Jacoby to no Trump. There isn't um, a good way of bidding many of these hands. So, for example, if you if you decide not to play this uh, convention or not yet, um, if you bid one, if your partner bids one spade here with enough points for game, you might make a what's called a delayed game raise, bid a new suit, and then when your partner rebids, then jump to four spades here. But this. Uh, bidding sequence isn't particularly revealing. Uh, it doesn't, you know, tell you anything about your partner's singleton heart, for example. Um, so you might well miss out on a slam here. Whereas playing Jacoby to no Trump, 
you would probably um, go on for a slam once your partner shows a sit. You would investigate a slam once your partner shows a singleton or vo a void in hearts. Um, and these bidding sequences are not really um, that useful if you if you have a, a fairly strong hand. One spade, four spades, for example, is always relatively weak. It's called the preemptive game raise, a hand where you have something you know approaching seven losers but it's mainly based on distribution not particularly strong in points and one spade three spades is also not suitable on a hand like this because that is invitational showing 10 to 12 points and it could be passed so hands like this it's very useful i think to play jacoby to no trump um and i do recommend you give it a try um, how else can the bidding go on? Well, if it's gone um, one spade, two no trump, three no trump, this hand here would look at it number of losers here, which is six, and add it to the number of losers that their partner has shown. So here, that three no trump bid, if you recall, is showing um, a um, uh, showing a six loser hand. And if you add it, your losers, which is also six, that's 12 losers. And if you take that away from 18, that would suggest you can bid to the six level. This hand here, though, might be more suitable, not just going straight into Blackwood, but starting by Q bidding. And the reason you're Q bidding on this hand, on the East hand here, is that you're worried about the heart suit. Um, in other words, if your partner uh, doesn't have control of hearts, then uh, you might be you might have two quick losers in that suit. So after three no trump, rather than going straight into Blackwood, you might Q bid. And that's what it means if you bid a new suit. Four diamonds is saying, partner, I'm interested in a slam. I've got first round control in diamonds. Do you have anything you can Q bid? And if your partner bids four hearts, that's good news for you. Now, if you bid four no trump, your partner will bid five spades on this hand. Five spades playing Roman key card Blackwood is showing two key cards. Here it's the eight and king, sorry, eight of hearts, king of spades, and the and the queen of spades. So here, um, six spades should be a pretty good contract, even though you're missing the ace of clubs. Um, that is hopefully going to be your only loser and if you're worried about the um that you might have another loser in diamonds you'll be able to uh hopefully discard that on uh either the diamonds or the or the clubs but um that that's what it means if you if you bid a new suit it's a q bid um you're not meant to use jacoby to no trump if you have a singleton or void so if you can support your partner's suit um but if you yourself have a singleton or void you should bid. Um, uh, you should play a split bid. Make a splinter bid in that case. Um, and what do you do if you can't bid two no trump as a natural bid? Well, on a hand like this, this might be one where you were thinking of responding two no trump, but you'll always have something else you can bid. And here you would just bid two clubs. So the fact that you can't jump to two no trump as a natural bid is no great loss i think uh you'll always find have another bid you can make two clubs here if you bid two clubs and your partner rebid say two no trump with 11 points now you'd go to three no trump so these are my recommended slam conventions um pretty much in this order um that you you play roman key card blackwood um control showing cue bids and splinter bids. And then the last one here is Jacoby to no Trump. And I do recommend you, um, you, you, you do these all. I don't have any others to recommend, um, but that, that's the last one that I would add to the list. And uh, just before we end, I'm just gonna give a little quiz for you all. And uh, you might want to get a, a pen and paper and, and jot down your responses. And this is just to uh, give you a chance to practice these hands. You open one spade on all of these hands. Your partner rebids two no trump, which is Jacoby two no trump. 
and have a think about what you would bid with each of these three hands. And there's going to be a poll in a moment with all three uh, questions on it. So have a think about both hand one, hand two, and hand three. Think about, you might want to jot down what you're going to bid. And when the poll comes, you can select your answer. So I'll give you a while to think about those. Okay, I'm going to uh, end the poll there and let you see the results. And most of you, I think, have got most of these right. Uh, the first one, most of you went for three hearts. The second one, again, nearly all of you went for three no Trump. And the third one, most of you went for three spades. And uh, I agree with those answers. Let's just go back to the show and let's look at what they show. Yeah, hand one. Um, I think a very good thing to do if you have a singleton or void is to show it. Um, so I bid three hearts there. Hand two, if we count our losers, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six loser hand. So it's a, a medium hand, if you like. And you show that by bidding three no trump. And hand three, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five five just a five loser hand so you make the strongest bid you can there by bidding three spades there so yeah most of you seem to have got those uh, uh got those right any questions about any of that so tony what would east reply to your three spades would he go for no trumps or well so it it, it would depend right so um if if he's interested in looking for a slam, which uh -huh. so so I mean, with, with the second example, he might not be because he might have, you know, a very minimum hand yeah. on the third hand. He's probably going to be looking for a slam. Yeah. Um, and then the options are either to go into, uh, well, to bid it in certain or otherwise bid um, Roman key card Blackwood or Blackwood or otherwise to Qubit. So if. Um, if if East, for example, on this third one, bids um, another suit, then that is a cubit. He's looking for, uh, he's showing a first round control in that suit mm -hmm. and uh, inviting you to uh, to cubit anything you 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 want to cubit, or otherwise he'd just go straight into Blackwood. If that if all he wanted to be sure of is he wasn't missing um, more than one key card then he would just go into uh, uh blackwood or roman key card blackwood mm -hmm. thank okay. you all right any other questions on that um i'll uh, i'll stop the uh the talk shortly there then um yes there will be some hands involving that of course you don't have to play this convention if you're not ready for it but it'll be harder to bid certain slams um if you if you don't <laughs>